Do you want to learn how to make epic looking YouTube thumbnails and get more views for your videos? Well, this is the perfect video for you. In today's lessons, we're going to be going through the exact process of how I create my thumbnails that have gotten millions of views on my channel, and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to recreate them yourself. Stay tuned. So a couple years ago, I actually posted one similar to this, and that video has almost a million views, and today I wanted to make an updated version to what I was talking about, going through some of the new ways that I design thumbnails to get more views on my YouTube videos. If you're unfamiliar, having good thumbnails on your videos is really important because it will increase your click-through rate, also known as CTR. With an increased click-through rate, your videos are going to be recommended in the search engines and suggested feeds a lot more often, thus increasing your your views and monetary gain from those videos. So let's jump straight into my computer and I'm going to be showing you exactly how that's done. All right guys, so the software we're going to be using today is Adobe Photoshop. It's the best graphical editing software out there on the market right now. When you first open Photoshop, you want to go over to this button called Create New and copy the settings that I have if I move over to the actual template that we're going to be using today. 1920 by 1080, making sure that this setting right here is checked on pixels. RGB color and then the background white go ahead and click create and you'll be given a blank white document the first thing we need to do is establish the background of our thumbnail. Now, depending on what type of video you're actually creating and what niche you're in, this is going to vary a lot. So hypothetically, say you were a travel channel and you went to India and you want to make a video about India. Well, maybe you took a photo and you want to use that as your background, or perhaps you're a gaming content creator. You love playing Fortnite and you want to go ahead and choose a map background on Fortnite to use as the backing of your thumbnail. I'm going to go ahead and go to Google images and pull some something up that we can use. Okay guys, so we are in Google right now. I'm just going to type in Fortnite and we're going to go over to the images section on Google here and pull something up. All right, so this one looks pretty cool over here. We're just going to go right click and copy image and it's really important to make sure that when you're selecting a background for your thumbnail, you're looking at the quality and the dimensions of the image. So if we're creating a 1920 by 1080 document, then we want to make sure that our background is at least that file size or larger to preserve the quality in editing. Okay guys, so let's go back into Photoshop, press control slash command V on our keyboard to paste the image into our document. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, scrolling with my scroll wheel and holding alt on my keyboard. I'm going to press control slash command T on my keyboard to bring up the transform tools. And then I'm just going to make sure that the edges here are going to link up with our document. I'm holding shift on my keyboard right now to make sure that the aspect ratio is intact. Click the check mark box at the top of our screen. And now we have the fully transformed photo. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer down here at the bottom right hand corner of our Photoshop document. Head over to gradient map and this is where you can really play around with the settings. I'm going to go ahead and choose a gradient here in the properties panel to my liking. You guys can choose a specific color that you want your photo to look like or your thumbnail to look like. I'm going to go ahead and choose something and I will get back to you when that's finished. Okay, I've chosen my gradient map. You guys can copy the exact color codes here. I'll show you. This is the darker one right here, and then this is the lighter one right here. You can copy these color codes, pause the video if you want. But now that we have our gradient map, we're going to be adding the lighting and the shadows to our thumbnail to accentuate the backing and make it pop. So go down here and create a new layer, clicking this button right here above our gradient map. Go to your brush tool by pressing B on your keyboard or selecting it from the the toolbar. Up here at the top, we want to make sure that our hardness is all the way at 0%. And then using the bracket keys on our keyboard, we're going to increase the size with the right bracket key. You can also decrease the size with the left bracket key if you want, but increase the size with your right bracket key, change the foreground color to white, and then I like to zoom out a little bit and make sure that the uh, the brush is relatively large. And then I just like to drag across the top here. Maybe I try it out a couple times to see which one I like. And that effect is going to add a nice light at the top of our image, adding some depth into the background. So we're going to rename this layer to light so we know what it is moving forward. We're going to create another layer at the bottom of our screen and then change the foreground color to black. 
Next, this is going to be adding our shadows. So we're gonna go to the sides of the image, maybe decrease the brush size using our bracket keys again. And we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing we did with our light by just going around the edges and the bottom of our thumbnail and adding a nice shadow. I'm gonna rename this layer. And now if we can see, we turn the two effects on and off, it really does add that extra dimension into the backing. It makes it just stand out so much more. When we add text a little bit later, it's gonna make even more of a difference. So the next step is creating another layer on top of the two layers that we just made, and then pressing Control and Backspace on our keyboard. If it's a Mac, then it is Command Backspace, and this will fill our entire document with the background color. Now this is where we're going to add a border to our thumbnail nails to again make that background stand out a little bit more so double click on the layer that we just made bringing up the layer style panel make sure your fill opacity is all the way at zero and then go over to stroke to add the effect making sure that the position is on inside the color is black and then you can go ahead and play around with the actual size of the stroke maybe something like 13 for me and then changing the opacity down to something like 15% 16% works well and then if we zoom in here here we can see that it has created a nice border around our thumbnail and again that's just going to make it look a lot more professional we're gonna rename this layer to our border so we know exactly what it is always making sure everything is organized inside of our document and now it is time to move on to our text you can press T on your keyboard or go ahead and select the type tool from your toolbar and at the top we're gonna to be using the font called Burbank big condensed I will leave a link in the description down below for you guys to download this font 100% free so you can follow along. I'm gonna create a new layer above everything else we've made and then just click wherever we want to center the text on our document. Don't worry if it's a little off center, we're gonna fix that a little bit later on. So I'm gonna just change the title and the text to this, maybe YouTube. I'm gonna select it and then change the color from black to white. Click the check mark box here. And then on our keyboard, I'm gonna hold Alt and then on this layer panel here, we're gonna hold Alt and then click up, click and drag up, and that's going to create a duplicate of our text. Alternatively, you can just press Control slash Command J, and that's going to create a duplicate as well. We're gonna use our Move tool by pressing V on our keyboard and drag the layer on top below. And then we're gonna change the text for this one using the text tool again to Thumbnail. And then just do that, holding Shift to make sure that it's all capitalized. You can also use a character effect, this one right here if you wanted to. Again, in Photoshop, there are a ton of different ways to do a singular effect, so if you find a way that you like a little bit better than the way I do it, by all means go for it. I'm just showing you the exact process I take when I make my thumbnails. Go ahead and click the check mark box here at the very top and now we have the text that we want. The next step is to add some effects. So what I'm going to do is go over to my rectangular marquee tool by pressing M on our keyboard and then creating a new layer above our text layers here and dragging it below. Just click and drag and then go over to our document, zooming in a little bit and I'm going to click and drag a nice box around our thumbnail text and this will create a selection with just the pixels we've selected making sure our new layer is selected here in the layers panel press control backspace and that's going to fill our selection with our background color Next, we need to center the thumbnail text with our box that we just made, and it's very simple to do. Hold control on your keyboard, go over to the layer panel here, and then make sure that you click the little box that we just made. Go back to our thumbnail text here, go to the move tool at the top by pressing V on your keyboard or going to the toolbar, and then clicking these two buttons at the top to align the text with our box. And now it is perfectly aligned and it looks a ton better in my opinion. Next, we're going to add a gradient overlay to the box that we just made. So double click on that layer, go to gradient overlay, and personally, I'm gonna go ahead and make this like something, I don't know, orange and yellow. You can play around with this if you want. It really just is personal preference and maybe I'm gonna edit this a little bit to you know bring out some more saturation in the oranges, bring that down a little bit, I don't know, bring that up. Again, you can play around with this if you want and uh, there's, there's no right way to make this. There's no wrong way to make this. I'm gonna play around with the settings a little bit to see what I like. Maybe bring the yellow a little bit back into this. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna add inner glow with the blend mode on overlay, the opacity at 35 and the size at 21. And that's going to add a nice glow around the box that we just made. 
So go ahead and double click on our thumbnail text, go to gradient overlay, and then choose a darker gradient. I'm gonna choose this one right here. You can copy the exact color codes if you want, pause the video and check that out. But these are the color codes that I'm going to use. It's not straight black. I don't like using straight black or straight white in a lot of my thumbnail designs and my designs in general. I like using a little bit of an off color and that's gonna give me a lot more room to play around with effects in the layer styles panel. So that is the gradient that I'm going to use. Click OK and actually, maybe I'm gonna click the reverse click OK and then once we do that we're going to go ahead and delete the thumbnail text on our box and that is going to bring out that inner glow around the edges of our text so go ahead and press Control slash command on our keyboard and click the thumbnail of the thumbnail I know that sounds a little weird but just follow what I'm doing click the thumbnail and that'll make a selection around the thumbnail text here go down and click on the box layer in our layers panel press backspace and that's going to delete the text from the box. So if we actually hide the text, you can see that it has completely deleted the text from the box. This is a really cool effect too, but because our background is a little bit lighter, we want to add that contrast. So that is why we're going to still include the darker text. We need to make sure that our YouTube text is centered with the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag some guides out. If you don't have these little ruler settings, you can press Control slash Command R on your keyboard, and that will We'll toggle the rulers and then you can just click and drag down to where you want the rulers to be. I'm going to drag two vertical guides out to the edges of our box and then I'm going to go over to our YouTube text layer, press control slash command T on our keyboard, holding alt and then dragging the corners. I'm going to make sure that the YouTube text is completely centered with our thumbnail box and this is going to take a little bit of time to play around with. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember in actuality the thumbnail is going to be zoomed out like like this so as long as the actual text is legible you should be good I'm gonna make this a little bit more vertically displaced here and now we have YouTube and thumbnail perfectly centered together the next step is making sure that it's centered with the entire document and that is really easy to do so I'm gonna remove the guides that we just made here by just dragging them out from where they came from going to the very top here on our thumbnail layer holding shift and then selecting the bottom layer our box press control slash command G on our keyboard to group them and then I'm going to rename this the text one group there we go text one group now I'm going to press control slash command A on our keyboard to select the entire document that we're working with, go to the move tool, and just like before with this group selected, we're gonna click these two buttons at the top and that is going to completely center our text. Apologies for the YouTube not being vertically displaced a little bit more. I actually re-recorded that last section, but here we go, YouTube and thumbnail now perfectly centered. I'm gonna do that one more time just to make sure. There we go, YouTube and thumbnail perfectly centered in our document. I'm I'm going to add a gradient overlay on top of YouTube to make sure that it's not completely white. You can copy these settings right here if you want. You can create like a nice little shine effect by having white gray, white gray, white gray. It just looks really cool. And then turning the opacity down to maybe 27%. Awesome. Now we have the basic text, but if you notice the YouTube kind of blends in with the background a little bit and I think there's a lot more that we could do to help accentuate it from the background. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to actually hold alt on our keyboard and duplicate this group by dragging up in the layers panel right click merge group and that's going to merge everything that in that group into one layer in Photoshop we're gonna press control on our keyboard and select the thumbnail by clicking it again creating a new layer dragging that below going to select modify expand if I can find it here and then 20 pixels is what I like to use you can go higher you can go lower but we're gonna go with 20 pixels because I feel like that gives the most natural effect or stroke around it once we have that selection we want to go and make sure that our new layer is selected making sure the background color is black and then control backspace to fill it in now you might be wondering why I don't just go ahead and add a stroke to the layer that we just created the merged group and that's because the stroke effect doesn't give me the flexibility and the freedom I like when I'm adding multiple effects on top of each other so that's why I like to do it this way you can do the stroke effect if you want and then rasterize that and then make a new layer or a new stroke on top of that but this is just the method that I like to do so as we can see it did a pretty good job but if we zoom in here there are some areas that aren't 
black and kind of look wonky. So we're gonna go to the polygonal lasso tool here by pressing L on our keyboard or just by selecting it from the toolbar and then making a selection around the areas that we want to refill in with black. Uh, very simple, I messed up on that one second. Let me redo that. All right, and now we have the selection and we're just gonna do the same thing. Press control slash command backspace on our keyboard and that is going to fill it back in with black and this is a little bit wonky down here. So we're gonna fill that in with black as well. You can go around your image or your text and really make those minute adjustments, but for the tutorial in this video, I wanna move through it relatively quickly. Now, this stands out a ton more than it used to, in my personal opinion. The black uh, stroke effect, it just adds so much more depth, but we're not done. We're actually gonna add a little bit more. We're gonna double click on this layer that we just made, add another stroke on top of that, making sure the position is on outside and the color is on white, and we're gonna drag down the side a little bit and then increase the opacity back to 100 and that's going to add a white stroke around our black stroke to really give more depth to the text overall and I think that just looks amazing guys don't you think if you want to go the extra mile you can go ahead and add some lighting effects on the text so making another layer and making sure it's at the top of everything go to your brush tool and select maybe an orange color down here something like that that matches a little bit and eh, we'll drag it a little bit more yellow Using our bracket keys, we're gonna decrease the size of the brush, and then we're just gonna add some, you know, pop here, pop, 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 right there, adding some lighting effects to our thumbnail. It looks a little bit wonky right now, but we're gonna go and change that. Double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles, change the blend mode to overlay. If we hide and show the layer, you can really see the effect. Maybe we wanna add a little bit more brightness into that, so we can press Control and U on our keyboard, and then bring the lightness into that a little bit more. And that is it, that is the text on your thumbnail. You can go ahead and add some more effects to this if you want. Now I'm gonna name all of these layers here, so lighting, effects making sure that we know exactly what it is all right so the last step that I like to do is group everything together again by holding shift on our keyboard going to the very top layer and then holding shift again going to the very bottom layer and then pressing control and G and that will group everything together and I'm gonna name this one and then I'm going to duplicate it by holding alt on my keyboard and dragging up in the layer panel right click merge group and that is going to merge all of our thumbnail assets that we've made today into one layer while also preserving the editing capabilities in the layers below it in case we want to change anything with the first layer selected with the merged group we're going to go over to filter and then camera raw filter from here we can play with some of the settings to make it pop a little bit more so maybe turn up the exposure a little bit increase the contrast increase the highlights maybe decrease the shadows increase the whites and then the blacks maybe you'll decrease that a little bit add some clarity some dehaze uh, some texture some vibrance oh that's making it pop so much more you can play around with the tone curves if you want a little bit as well maybe the detail we can add some sharpening to it HSL adjustments and I'm not going to go through everything in this video but the the purpose is that if we click OK it just creates a drastic difference in the backing in my opinion it really makes it stand out that much more and increases the eyes going towards the center of the thumbnail which is what we wanted all together the last step is to export the thumbnail correctly so go over to file export save for web legacy and making sure you're copying the settings that I have on my screen right now making sure this is PNG 24 and not JPEG or PNG 8 making sure transparency is selected and there's no metadata now sometimes YouTube will give you an issue where you have a file that's larger than two megabytes from these settings and if that's the case just resave it as a JPEG file and you should be good I like saving it as a PNG 24 because it just preserves the quality in the design and I like showing that off on like my portfolio or other areas online so that's why I save it like that if you want to save it in a smaller file size again just make sure you go to JPEG instead of PNG 24 click save and then find a place on your computer where you can easily find it and upload it to YouTube well that's it guys we are finished if you found this video informative at all make sure you go ahead and leave a like rating on the video it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm if you want kind of a cheat sheet on your YouTube thumbnails you don't want to have to keep adding the same effects over over and over again and you want to you know make it look a little bit better and you don't know how to do it perfectly yourself then you can go ahead and purchase my comprehensive thumbnail assets graphics pack on
on my digital store. I will leave a link to that in the description and on screen right now. And that is going to give you access to all of my personal effects that I use in all of my thumbnails throughout my career and also through other clients that I work with. And it's just going to give you a really nice resource pack to use when you're kind of stumped, you don't know how to do an effect, or you're looking for something to make your thumbnail pop that much. Again, I will leave a link in the description down below if you want to go and pick that up. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell for post notifications. Good luck making your thumbnails. I hope that what we've learned today is useful and you get more views on your videos. Until next time, guys, my name's Delvidge and I'm out. Peace.